Welcome everyone to the latest installment of the Nirvana podcast. I am John Murphy and with me as always is my co-host Ian Benoit. We are bringing and we are bringing a new topic, a different topic to the discussion. We're not talking about a movie or a film genre in general. We're kind of talking about a thing, a tr- a trend, a technique in filmmaking that a style. A style, yes, a style that uh, well, that started that started in the early days of filmmaking and kind of died died off, uh, def- and kind of died off with the advent of CGI thanks thanks to Jurassic Park, which by the way has just celebrated its 30th anniversary. Yeah, and we figured, what better way to celebrate Jurassic Park's 30th anniversary than to look at the history of dinosaur film in this certain way. Mm -hmm. We're not going to go into too much detail with this certain topic, uh, which, as you can tell by the by the title up there, it's all it's about the about the colloquial term slurpasaur, which we'll get into detail. What the heck that what the hecky that is later. But yeah, for the 30th anniversary of Jurassic Park, I mean, we we could have just done Jurassic Park again, but we did that two years ago and quite frankly we don't want to react we don't want to want to rehash everything what we said was said two years ago and not much has changed on our point of views i don't think mm-hmm. no but we did want to do something dinosaur related and ian did bring bring to thought of this topic that we've had in our heads for the past few months and it is dinosaur related and thanks to jurassic park we don't really have to do this type of this type of technique anymore although you could say that even could say that even the the japanese monster movies like godzilla also kind of did, did away with this trend kind of kind, sort, sort of it, it ushered in that era a little bit mm-hmm. but anyway we're talking about slurpasaur and this actually combines both of both of our fields me as a filmmaker and Ian, as as a caretaker of of cold of cold blooded animals, or for you layman's reptiles. Yeah, and uh, I've been working with reptiles for ah oh, man, close to five years now. I am by no means an expert, but <laughs> I. I do talk with a lot of experts. I've started a documentary series going behind the scenes of various reptile facilities. Um, mm-hmm. The first one is has been up on my channel for quite a few years. Well, not years, but a few months now. Yeah, that's uh, the one with Clyde the... Peelings. Yes. That's the one with, with the, the Komodo dragons, right? Yes. And, and I was very fortunate enough to have a good relationship with the people up at Clyde Peelings. They let me go out and do that. However, I personally have worked with a variety of reptiles. <laughs> um, I can still read them off. <laughs> uh, I've worked with lizards. I've worked with panther chameleon, green iguana, and caiman lizards. Snakes. Oh, boy. Ball <laughs> pythons, Borneo short tail pythons, green tree pythons, Burmese pythons, reticulated pythons, emerald tree boas, Brazilian rainbow boas, common boas, red tail boas, yellow anacondas, African green bush snake, Kenyan sand boas, and Nelson's milk snakes. That's just the snakes I've worked with. Turtles, which, and then right it will go right into tortoises. South Florida cooter, Mississippi map turtle, false map turtle, diamondback terrapin. Red-eared sliders and alligator snapping turtles. Yet the the one that particular one actually caused uh, you to bleed in our Latin, caused you to bleed like the date, like the hour before, like right before our last session. Oh no, that wasn't an alligator snapping turtle. That was a common snapping turtle. Oh, I don't work with those professionally. Oh, okay. If I happen to get bit by a, an alligator snapping turtle. I would be losing a few fingers. Okay. Whereas a common snapping turtle probably could just bite down to the bone. Yeah, so I'd rather take the claws of a common snapping turtle any day. Okay. <laughs> uh, tortoises I've worked with. 
Red fruit tortoise, leopard tortoise, African pancake tortoises, which are critically endangered, Sokata tortoises, and Aldabra tortoise, the second and third largest tortoise in the world, respectively. I've also worked with a few macaws, uh, cockatoos, and African gray parrot, just throw those in there because I've worked with those as well. And my personal favorite, American alligators. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ranging in size from a foot and a half all the way up to a 10 foot male. The, the, this particular lizard actually is featured prominently in the in the topic that we that we are are discussing. Even though it's not really a lizard, John. Even though it's not a real alligators are not lizards. Right, they're birds because they're they live during the time of dinosaurs, right? No, they're archosaurs. They split off from the line that would lead to dinosaurs before dinosaurs showed up. Okay. But yeah, so I've been around the block a couple times with reptiles. I know how to care for them responsibly, which is what I always push for. Mm -hmm. And um, this trend of slurposaurs, what exactly is it? Because I can toss in my couple cents here and there with mm -hmm. you know, what how I feel about this. But John, what is a slurposaur? Well, slurp slurposaur is essentially it's a it's honestly a community term done uh by the film it uh in the film community it's a term used mostly button by uh you used uh, for movies that tended to that tended to use actual animals to in to kind of don't know what the word i'm looking for is but uh essentially take the place of prehistoric animals essentially essentially use live live uh, lizards reptiles even or even not just reptiles and even insects or or mammals and try to and pose and pose them as like as large monstrous creatures and and here's the thing it is done when you when the studio doesn't even have have enough money for uh, C CGI, which was which don't, didn't come around till about the eight, till the eighties. Uh, so it wasn't an option in, in the yeah. first place. So it wasn't, it wasn't an option for the for the decades where the where this was most prominent. Uh, couldn't use something. Couldn't use stuff. Uh, it was too. They used it because it was cheaper than stop motion, which takes a while. It does takes a takes a while. It takes a lot of time. And where it, and where it's not as expensive as a guy in a rubber suit. Which so really, is, money saving technique here. It's like this is like this is like shoestring budget. Mm -hmm. It's mainly used Movie in B movies, or some, or movies that have like a B have a B movie like feel to them. And what really brought and what brought this to my attention was a video by a youtuber not, uh that by the name of uh dino diego or dino diego i don't i don't know how i think I, it's I, dino diego i like dean i like dean i kind of like dino more because of the like little run the little internal rhyme scheme dino diego regardless For, that, that he, guy yeah that his video which is linked in the descriptions kind of gives a very good detailed history well not too not too detailed but a detailed enough history into this trend of using live animals and passing them off as di as dinosaurs as and it is very it's very fascinating to look it's very fascinating to look at it from a filmmaker's perspective it's fascinating in how it's in how it is pulled off although now although nowadays there are there are some questionable things about about this technique that's certainly one way to put it um so so john how was this technique pulled off well it was okay well it was mostly Polton, of course, as I've mentioned, as I've mentioned before, it used live. It actually used live animals, and mostly these were reptiles, iguanas, monitor lizards, even even snakes, and even a few alligators and crocodiles. 
and how it and how the, and but it wasn't just simply you know place them in place them in a miniature looking set film them from a low angle and they look and they look really big no 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 they actually cut they took a little bit further where they would actually attach like spines fins horns wings even frills to the to the to the reptiles to actually make them look more to make them dinosaur like and keep in mind this is what the pre-dinosaur renaissance era of what we thought these animals were like mm -hmm. yeah this one this was yeah this was before i, I mean keeping although in 1940 when fanta when disney's fantasia came out with the uh the uh, right of spring the right of spring you know the evolution of the evolution of the earth we still had a pretty good understanding of what some dinosaurs were like a t like a t-rex a stegosaurus a triceratops and a brontosaurus we kind of had a general idea what the, that was that's kind of where the uh, according to the video uh this is sort of where this is kind of where those movies did cut kind, uh kind of I didn't. Fumble I don't the ball. Say, I didn't want. No, I don't. I don't want to say it. It's not like they. It's not that they assumed that the general audience was stupid, but they never really. The really bad B movies that that would out that would just outright state that that this creature that's the Tyrannosaurus or the Bron or the Brontosaurus, and it's like and audiences would be quick to point out. No, that's not what that is. That's even funnier because that scene that you're referencing in one of those movies, they claimed it was a Tyrannosaurus, even mm. though they showed the head of an iguana, mm -hmm. which is not carnivorous in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> Having worked with them before, yes. I still work with one. Right. Not carnivorous in any way. But, all right, but how the, all right, but. Despite, despite that, if you didn't mention what what dinosaur they were supposed to represent, you just you just either called them like a prehistoric creature or you just called them a dinosaur. The audience is willing to suspend their disbelief for for that enough. So so yes, it looks like an alligator and it looks like it has like a a sail on its on its back. Fine, well, it, we'll, we'll say it's a dimetrodon, we'll say, whatever. Or we'll just say we'll say it's a dinosaur. We can We kind of know this is a movie. This is this is a movie. We know it's not supposed to be like a science lesson. Although, how the, although how the how they got the how they attach those onto the animals is a is again more I guess morally reprehensible. Yeah. Keep, uh... keep, keep in mind this decade was. It, Animal animal rights as well as animal cruelty was either not a thing or just not as or not as big as it is now. Yeah, we we still had some learning to do mm -hmm. during this day and age, and we still do, honestly. Mm -hmm. But the way they attached those, at least according to Wikipedia, for probably the most famous Slurpistor scene of all time. Mm -hmm. Um, they glued the features on. They gl they glued and them on. Yeah. I don't know what kind of glue it was, but then there's the fact that a you're just gluing something onto a living animal, mm -hmm. and that still happens today, and it called out immediately for what it is. But back in these days, it just uh... now that now that's not what makes it morally reprehensible the movie that you're referring that, there's, to <laughs> that's awesome that we get into that yes uh, hmm. it, yes uh the movie the movie that we're talking about is one million bc and among the film community it is it is famously infamous it is a, it is a it is definitely considered so bad it's good but there's a, but a, there is a scene in there that has actually been reused in multiple B movies that needed giant prehistoric monsters to Some fight, who, who fight, and this is kind of, and 
this is when it kind of, and this is, in my mind, this is when it goes from morally reprehensible to just downright ex exploitative. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's absolutely cruel at this point. Mm -hmm. um, yes, a li yes, a lizard actually dies. We can, on screen. We see its actual death captured mm -hmm. on film. Uh, and this happens multiple times, or at least a couple times throughout the uh, the trend. Mm -hmm. It's not just this one film. Um, so, a bit of backstory. The two animals that are fighting in this, you can look it up mm -hmm. if, you, if you want. Uh, content warning, obviously. If you have an issue with animal cruelty, obviously do not watch it. But, or, if, or if you don't like the sight of blood, even if it's not color, even if even black if, and white, even if it's black and white, yeah. Um, in this scene, there is an on-screen, extremely visceral fight between a young American alligator with a prosthetic fake dimetrodon-like sail glued to its back. Mm -hmm and an animal called an Argentine black and white tegu. And the animals are actively hurting each other. Mm -hmm. And one at least does, let's see. Uh, it's, it, according to the Wikipedia article, it the tegu is severely injured. And I seriously doubt it was just severely injured. It well, okay. Well, I actually I looked up that clip. Now uh, this mo the movie which came out in 1940, it's in the public domain, so it's easily viewed. Absolutely, yeah. It's e it's easily viewed, and I came so I came to uh, that I came to that part in the movie. I had to do some scrubbing, and I actually t and I actually timed it. I actually timed it from the first bite to the, to the end of the fight. It took on screen that thing that fight lasts about one minute forty two seconds. Already, that's already too long for my tastes. Absolutely, and granted, this was the forties. This was the forties. Now, if this was now if this was between the Tyrannosaurus and the Spinosaurus from Jurassic Park three. I would have no problem because I know those those uh, creatures aren't real on screen. Yeah, absolutely, and obviously they're not real. <laughs> so <laughs> you can you can do whatever you want to a fake animal. Mm -hmm. However, you might still get some backlash on it depending on how you you portray that. Mm -hmm. how, however, but, yeah. However, Ian. There is also a scene where the where uh, the where the caveman also is also walking is walks along the the uh, defeated the defeated animal, and there's and there's also a lingering there's a lingering shot on a bite wound that is still that is still uh, flow, flowing with blood. That. That entire scene takes is an additional thirty seconds. With ten, ten of those are lingered on that flesh wound. The, uh, short answer: This would not fly today. This would not. This would absolutely not fly today. So now, now, keep in mind, we're not bashing this movie too much because of because of that. It's a product it of product it, of it's a product of its time. <laughs> yeah. We're, but we're me personally. This movie has its place in cinematic history, not in a good way. All movies kind of have have their place in it, and the reason why and the reason why it has this place is because that fight scene is also famous for being reused in several in several other movies, as I've mentioned before. Yeah, movie. Wikipedia has an entire list of things it include. And Dino Diego does go into some of that in his video, but he does leave out, I think, I think he does leave out some of it. I could mm -hmm. be wrong there, but it's, uh, I believe he used not the best scene to reuse, in my opinion, mm -hmm. but, uh, and that's just not the, good. Yeah, not and good. that is just, yeah, and that's, 
that's just one. That's just one, and that's that's just one of the of the scene. That's one of the scenes that we kind of do have ish that we do have issues. On me personally, on the one hand, I honestly like the kind the ingenuity in you in using live animals to sort of uh, to sort of to sort of bypass a, a budgetary issue as well as you know using using actual animals and compositing them in and passing them off as like monstrous creatures the 50s have actually been have been pretty famous for using giant monsters in, in horror movies which we'll we'll mention later yeah however however me personally i like animals Yes, big yes, spiders scare me. Tarantulas mostly. There are some animals that I want that I would like to keep away from. I would like I would like a very respectable distance from them. But I wouldn't. But I would never. I would never want to glue something. I wouldn't want to glue something on them that would probably get that would probably cause some bad reactions to them once it's removed. Absolutely, yeah. And uh. Speaking from a reptile keeper's perspective. <laughs> dishonor! <laughs> dishonor on you! Dishonor on your cow! Dishonor on your whole family! Oh my gosh, yes. It is uh, not great. I mean, granted, I am somewhat biased. I do work with these animals just about every day. Mm -hmm. I have two of them behind me. <laughs> and just uh, using that willingly... I'm not sure what they expected to happen, but obviously the alligator is going to win, and that's not a full-size animal. That's a four and a half. That's a three to four and a half foot animal. And even then, it uses the technique that it's that uh, it's famous it's, for. It's, yeah, it's famous for it. The 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 death rolls. Yes, and as someone that has seen that in person, it's terrifying. And to willingly put another animal in there mm -hmm. to get that death roll, because the death roll has been known about for a long ass time. And you want, you probably wanted that. And Tegu's will death roll too. Mm. They're omnivorous animals, but they will death roll from time to time. And to willingly get that on film, yeah, just for, you know, the spectacle. Uh huh. That that yes, that's I've, reprehensible. Yes, I have to agree with that one. I Even mean, if you don't like reptiles, or you don't have a thing against them. Animal cruelty should set off, off a big red flag for you. Mm hmm. Can we go on to something a little happier? <laughs> <laughs> um. I really don't. What's ha What's happier than the than the ethical issues of the, of the slurposaur not on screen violence and death <laughs> i guess like like what was used in what was that movie that uh, diego mentioned was it journey to the center of the earth yeah, maybe maybe the one that actually used that used a giant iguanas giant monitor lizards one was yeah if 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 it's just there are some um, movies that don't paste things onto the animal mm -hmm. for added effect. Mm -hmm. I don't really have an issue with that. Yeah. If you do, Slurposaurus is a touchy subject in terms of how you do it. Mm -hmm. And that still leads into our modern filmmaking practices of using animals in film. Mm-hmm. But the overall, but we didn't. But because of the because of the AP, P, the APSA, or or I forget what APSCA. I forget what it, the SPCA, the, the SPCA, the Society for Prevention to of, of Cruelty to Animals. They're they're honestly they have a lot more. They have a lot more. Uh, foundation now they de they definitely have a lot more, they definitely have a lot more pull nowadays than they did back back then yes 
which it which is kind of a good thing i would not i would not want now me being a filmmaker i would honestly seeing this seeing uh diego's video on it it did kind of make me think i would like to make a giant monster movie with reptiles but not the way they made it no you, not the way it, they i made think it. it could be done and it's been done independent filmmakers have you know made cute little mini movies with like their pet turtle or something <laughs> as your pet turtle stomps around. you got you should be able to find this clip easy i <laughs> where a pet turtle stomps around a fake city eating <laughs> boobia roaches it's adorable it is so damn cute there, there's that one guy that green screens his black cat into and into popular movies what was it owl kitty I owl think. kitty yeah he did jurassic park he did Again, jurassic park he no did. issues with that Jurassic Park. He did. He did. How to Train Your Dragon. Yes. It's it's funny. It's funny with how with what can be done nowadays. But here's here's the other. Okay, that Owl Kitty. What we mentioned. That is technically a Slurpasaur, and that's kind. That is the lighthearted side of Slurpasaur. It is absolutely. It's using that for comedic effect. And honestly, the creators of South Park did that twice. They did it twice in uh let's see in their let's see in the uh trilogy called the startling they used real giant guinea pigs not okay not real not giant they were real guinea pigs that were composited in to yes look, to and... look to look like they were giant and in their movie you ever heard hear of uh team america world police no no oh Oh, good God. Don't act like I get out, dude. <laughs> okay, well... All right, well, Team America World Pro World Police is pretty much like... Oh, my God, it's like parody up... Cranked up to 11. Instead of an, instead of animation, they you All the characters are marionettes. So it's supposed to... You know, like that old Thunderbirds TV show, if you've seen clips of that. And they even... I think so, yeah. All right, and they... And they use the Slurpasaur in that one because the bad the bad guy has panthers, and really what they are are just black cats. Yeah, that counts as Slurpasaur. It counts as Slurpasaur, but that's the lighthearted side of it. It's using it for comedic effect. It's kind of yeah. it's knowing that it's 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 knowing that. Yeah, this technique can be a little silly. So why not so why not use it for our so why not use it for comedy? Yeah, comedy or simple, you know, lightheartedness. Mm -hmm. I have zero issues with that. I fully support more people doing that. Mm -hmm. But the way that it was done in the past can be left in the past. Yeah, it can be left Unless in the past. you're putting a cute little pair of wings that are attached to a harness on a mm -hmm. bearded dragon. I'm okay with that too. And that's sort of what we kind of talked about, because like I like I mentioned, is that seeing this, seeing Diego's video and tell, telling you about we you we've even mentioned it on the show a couple times of, of doing like a special collaboration project of like using sort of like using your knowledge, uh, your your access to reptiles and my filmmaking <laughs> knowledge to kind of do do like a little slurpasaur without any of the ethical any of the ethical problems i could probably get some footage from work <laughs> it certainly would open up to uh some better better shots with different animals i'll talk to my boss <laughs> okay and we we even talked about if there was a way to actually attach, you know, like horns or wings or any of those kind of things without the need for gluing. Yeah, and with there's some ways you can do it. And once again, there are cute little harnesses and stuff that are made for bearded dragons that do have <laughs> wings on them on occasion, and it's adorable. T turning a bearded dragon into an actual dragon. Yes, it's so cute. <laughs> and, and, and that is one way you can do it. It's silly and it's cute. I mean, if you want to want to keep it like that for some comedic effect, a comedic effect, you can do it. 
If not, you can still buy some and modify it, but but I'm pr and I'm sure there's a way you can modify it where it doesn't harm the, harm the reptile. Absolutely. It, if you're going to use live animals in whatever production you're doing, you got to make it ethical. Mhm. Mm and so that also kind of then that kind of brings to mind, okay, so if you're doing a story with giant with giant creatures, then then wouldn't that mean there is going to be a point where they fight? Well, there's Perhaps. also Perhaps. There's ways around that too. There's also there's ways around yes, there's ways around that too. See, filmmaking filmmaking has become so much more accessible than it was back in back in the nineties. What we when we used to think that we'd have to go to Hollywood, spend out, spend thousands of dollars, uh, to, uh, to get the right equipment, we can we can now do in our home for like a fraction of the price. There are, there are three D. You can models. use your phone. You can use your phone. There are three D models that I found on spe on certain websites, very good websites. Where, where some models can cost anywhere from five to even just about two hundred dollars. So, there, so you can so if you want to do something like this, like the Slurpasaur, without but not want to, you know, have blood on your hands, both literally and figuratively. Like there's a there's a way to do it ethically. Yeah, if you want. To get an animal to death roll, like say an alligator, mm -hmm. easy way to do it. You do it how we do it in, in here at work. You yeah, <laughs> you attach a piece of meat to a rope, give the meat to the animal, and let it roll. <laughs> <laughs> you just hang on. We do it with saltwater crocodiles. We do it with alligators. If you want something to roll, all you have to do is provide resistance and it will naturally want to roll hmm completely ethical and it's good enrichment for the animal mm -hmm. it gets it moving it gives it exercise then there then there would also then you could essentially do something similar to the to another animal that's essentially getting rolled you know put it in front of a green screen put them both in front of a green screen have them no, Film, shoot them rolling separately, and then combine them in post production, and there you go. There you go. And with our modern technology, that's not that hard. You just gotta know how to do it. Mm -hmm. And there's just so much that you could do with slurpasaurs that's ethical and fun. Mm -hmm. Granted, you might have some issues getting access to an alligator. Uh huh. They are dangerous animals. I just happen to work with them professionally. Don't keep them as pets. They eventually become my problem. <laughs> I work with several rescued alligators. Okay. But Let's... if you say like a bearded dragon or a, heck, mm -hmm. a leopard gecko, those are not hard to get a hold of. Or if you want a giant monster attacking a city, get a one of those very well done and well made uh, fake buildings that are partially destroyed that look great against kaiju statues by the way mm. and put a crested gecko on one of them it will just cling to the building and it will just sit there and, and lick its eye yeah and you can add some of the and you can add some of the other uh little uh, little potpourri little accoutrements to uh to it like smoke coming from the building or a little or a little bit of fire you know, oh, you know even a, a fog, a foggy mist going in front of it. Mm -hmm. Throw a green screen, throw a green screen behind it, and and then just add that little section right next to your mm -hmm. standard, you know, cityscape. Done. And so, what we did kind of mention, this is it's only possible nowadays because of yeah. because of how uh, widely accessible that this kind of stuff is, and how much techno technology our own our own uh our own views on reptiles as well as as well as what's now considered afford is what's considered affordable 
the movies that we were mentioning back back in this day, especially one million one million BC, uh, King uh, King Dinosaur, they did not well, especially one million BC, they did not have the budget to 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 put to make a fake to make a fake lizard to look to look like it was just that it was just killed by an alligator. They didn't even have it have enough money to make like a dummy app. A dummy tegu lizard that would get death that would that would get death rolled, or maybe they or maybe they did and they just didn't care. Like I said, but because a lot has changed since nineteen since the nineteen forty. But yeah, that's but that, but that's kind of why I this is where I kind of I see this is. This move that the movie that we're talking about, the one that started this whole Slurposaur trend, is morally reprehensible, but there's something good that can come out of it if you're if you're willing to if you're willing to brave it. Yeah. And the other movies have used monitor lizards, which mm-hmm. are again not the best, not overly accessible to most people. Mm-hmm. There are some species that are perfectly fine as pets. Yeah, there was another movie that Diego mentioned. I can't remember what its name. I where think there it was... was Journey to the Center of the Earth. Yeah, where two monitor lizards were actually were also filmed fighting to the death. You can act, mm-hmm. and you can actually see some loose skin, some loose skin flakes. Yeah, and it's. Uh, I think that actually was like. Uh, Either the Lost World, something or something. No, I think it was Journey to Journey to the Center of the Earth, nineteen fifty something. Oh, here. oh, there it is. Uh, the Land Unknown. That was it. The Land Unknown. Okay. You have Diego's video pulled up. Yep. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh. Land Unknown. What year did that come out? Uh, Land Unknown. Uh, 57, okay. Yep, so right in that same time frame. Uh, the Lost World, uh, the, the color, the That's one that's been remade out, a bunch of times. It's been remade a bunch of times, but this is the one based on uh, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's. Yes, the guy that wrote the Sherlock Holmes series. He also wrote. He also wrote a, wrote stories about it about an island of prehistoric animals. Uh, the, let's see. Oh no, yeah, that one also used. No wait, I was thinking of the remake of One Million BC, called One Million Years BC. Yeah, which honestly, I I've seen that one. I like that one. I haven't I haven't seen that one mainly because I, I love the stop motion. Yeah, I, I love the stop motion. I know of, I know of the, po- I know of the poster. I think everyone knows of the poster. Everyone knows of the poster. <laughs> but I did end up seeing, I ended up seeing a clip uh, for this video, and I had to say, yeah, stop motion. I was like, how can you have no budget for stop mo- for stop motion? But any, it but takes any- longer. That's a, that's a, that's their main cost. Oh, uh, that's that's right. But stop motion, yeah. Uh, Ray Harryhausen, of course, is is the is the god of stop motion. Uh, when Jason and the Argonauts, one million years BC, and I think he might have also done also done uh, did the stop motion for the movie The Creature from Twenty Thousand Fa- The Beast of Twenty Thousand Fathoms, which surpri- Ooh, I want to see that. Which surprisingly. Has the same has the same plot as God's has the same plot and premise as Godzilla, but it came out a year before that. <laughs> Wait, did this mean Godzilla was a remake? Uh technically Godzilla was supposed to be like King Kong. Hmm. But it's but that's it's a just, different discussion. I mean, it's a different discussion, but it's but and to kind of go go off track a little bit, it's just kind of amazing as how. This is what makes cinema so great: is that inspiration can come from ev- everywhere. It's not; it's not just in a box or in a vacuum. Yeah, 
And but yeah, I I'm see I've seen the clips uh, of the uh, dinosaur battle with the stop motion, and yeah, Harryhausen definitely breathed, breathed some life into this. Uh, I don't know, tyrann. It was it supposed to be a tyrannosaurus or an allosaurus? Uh officially it's an allosaurus but he also calls it a tyrannosaurus according to harry's house and they're both large carnivorous dinosaurs okay but you can definitely and again see... this was the 60s so yeah i mean that i'm just in awe of like the movement that he captured he made it seem like this wasn't just one something this one's wasn't a solid this wasn't a solid puppet i mean he had he there's a part he gave it the, life he gave it there's a part where he ma- where he made the neck stretch because it's reaching for someone and the body stays that's like oh my god that's exactly what an animal would do yeah it would snap forward mm-hmm so overall in, in terms of like the historicity of slurposaurs just freaking use stop motion man yeah. <laughs> Or you can actually get the animal to do what you want to do. Or if that if that's not use the use the other tried and true method that Japan has used for for years when it comes to Godzilla movies, just use a man in a rubber suit. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it looks cheesy now, and I'm sure it looked kind of cheesy then. But who cares? <laughs> so I if, mean, there's just. And so, yeah, even with even though this uh, this tr- this uh, this trend kind of it started and kind of died and kind of died out just as quick just as quickly. But if we you see it pop up here and there for comedic things, obviously, like yeah. you said before. But yeah, you see, yeah, as but... a serious filmmaking technique, it's pretty much done. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty much done. But, but me, I'm that. I'm that person that loves something that loves some of the old school effects. I don't know if I have the patience to do stop motion. I probably that's definitely for something. That's definitely for someone else. Mm-hmm. But Ian, if we did something, if now we come to a section where we just talk about like what what we would do, what we would do if we wanted to do like a slurposaurus scene or a or just like a setting like what like what would what would we do ian like what's some what are the some of the things that we would do given what we know now yeah a no gluing and no gluing props onto the animal no, that's just stupid yeah no glue no no absolutely glue. no glue um no adhesive it to... no adhesives whatsoever no glue, no sticky tack, no nothing. You might be able to get away with like a band around the animal in a safe place, like a like, like 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 an elastic band that you know holds uh, wings or spikes on. If you wanted okay. to go that route, okay. Like like with the bearded dragon harness with the wings on it. Okay, you can get away with that. I, I if you dyed the harness the same color as the actual animal skin, I don't have an issue with that. Okay. Um, but it would depend on the story. So, mm-hmm. say for example, uh, there's a team of scientists. We'd have to go, you know, Lake Placid route, <laughs> and say there's a there's a giant alligator or something in a lake, and it turns out to be like a dinosuchus or something. You very well could just use a living crocodilian, mm-hmm. use some filming techniques to increase the size, like what they did in Jaws, actually. They had a miniature cage. Oh, with that's a miniature right. Yes, figure the, in with the real. Does that show. count as slurposaurus? Uh, no. I think that just count. I think that counts as like a double. Even though they, since they were working with smaller sharks, they had to use a small cage and a small human to increase the visual size of the shark. They didn't. They didn't use. They didn't use a blue tip to. They didn't use the blue tip to. Uh to pass it off as as the as the enemy shark they used it didn't they use like a juvenile great white yeah they, they were younger they used younger great whites because they were in i think it was uh 
off of South Africa, yeah. if I recall correctly. So they didn't. So they didn't. You. So they didn't use a. They didn't use a different shark species to pass it off as the great white. They used an actual great white. Okay, fair enough. But you could use like an alligator in place of a dinosuchus, and it could be kind of like a lost world situation. Like where the heck did this thing come from? And yeah, it would be comedic because you know. Why not? But it would be, that's probably what I would do. I would get access to crocodilian and use filmic techniques to make them seem larger and as a prehistoric crocodilian. That's not what I would do. Mm -hmm. Or if I just wanted to be comedic, I would, like like I said before, use a crested gecko, a uh, fake destroyed building, and a green screen. <laughs> I would honestly, I would like that. I, I would like to do, I would like to do that, honestly. Just for I'm the, getting a crested gecko. Just for the, just for that shot, just for the, just for that shot. That would be fun to just composite. A, just like a, a 10 second, a five to 10 second little shot of a, of that, of a crested gecko on top of a destroyed building. <laughs> Attack of the giant gecko. Uh-huh. Or, or, or you don't even have to use dinosaurs. You could probably even use creatures from mythology, like one, like one idea that we, or even actual animals, prehistoric animals that weren't necessarily dinosaurs. Like the idea that Ian and I had was essentially using his his uh, milk his milk snake, and and passing it off as the Titan boa. Yeah, Titanoboa. It's uh. It didn't work out well. I, due to the setup I have, it just wouldn't work. Mm -hmm. I'd have to get a different set piece for it to work, but yeah, I could play around with crap and see what I could do, but. Mm -hmm. Where are you? <laughs> is, she, is she resting? Is he she should be. Oh, I see a face. Hi. It's it's feeding night. Oh. So uh, I'm not surprised she's keeping an eye on dad. <laughs> Hi, baby. <laughs> I'm surprised. Look my... at this. I'm surprised. Look at my... that little face. Where? I can't. Oh, there she is. I see her. That. I see her. I'll t I'll put a little red circle in the air in the area. That's where she is. Right there. Hey there. At least I think that's it. That little red and white spot. Yeah, that's her. That little red spot is her eye. Ah. Uh, Hello. She, de she demands food from Dad. <laughs> Unfortunately, she has to wait till Dad is finished. Okay. Okay. But You're yeah, it that it that's. I would just do like cut the guy on the building because that's just that's just hilarious. It is. It is. Yeah. And and also the the other good thing is that. Uh, this 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 filmmaking club that I am a part of. I mean, even getting a even getting a blue or green screen is so is so easy. You could just use uh, just use poster board, green or blue poster board, and you already have a and you already have a green screen for your for your like your models and your and your little creatures. I gotta get up to Walmart. <laughs> yeah. Or Ho or Hobby Lobby or no wait it's Sun or no it's Sunday when it's when at the time of this recording they're closed or any ah, well, or, even, did. or even your craft store any craft store yeah you might even be able to get it at like Rite Aid or something I think they carry some craft supplies but yeah it if you want to do it ethically and you have like a leopard gecko or something like that or a tortoise mm -hmm. or a small turtle go for it. Yeah, it's fun. Tag us. We want to see. I would honestly love. I would love to see that. I would love. I would love to see that. I would love to see any filmmakers who are wa who are watching this, who are listening to this, to try their hand at slurp at slurpasaur and like tag us. Tw uh, send it our way. Tw tag us on Twitter or on or add us on Facebook. Or t or send us a link in a in the in the comments down below. That's probably the best way to do it. That way, other people can see it. Yes. And, and I I would and again I would like to do 
this it's just something to cross to cross off on my on my VFX bucket list. It's an it's something that I would like to try out as well. Yeah, once I get the gecko, I could probably track down a destroyed city building and throw together like a 10 second clip and then you can just, you know, edit that out and have fun, John. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, but there's there's ways to go about be, um, doing the Slurposaurs ethically and still have fun with it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't have to go all out, you know, tasting things on the living animals because mm -hmm. A, that's kind of dangerous. <laughs> And B, it's also dangerous to the animal. So, so why is it? And why, uh, other than the fact that if you don't want to, if you don't glue, if if you'd rather not glue st glue stuff on on your body, why why glue it on other, on animals? Beside aside from that, what what is wrong? What is wrong with that? Aside from the whole cruelty aspect, what makes it dangerous is what I want. You go glue something onto the back of an alligator and let me know how well that works out. Okay. <laughs> fair point. Very fair point. I mean, yeah, you can get away with it with iguanas and stuff, but I've, I've heard of people that have lost fingers to iguanas. Really? So, oh my God, iguana bites are nasty. Even though they're herbivores, they're nasty. <laughs> Yeah, just because they just because they eat plants doesn't mean doesn't mean that uh, they don't doesn't mean that they are peace loving. No, I mean I work with a a young male and he's uh, tolerant of us. Let's say he's he's tolerant. Okay, he's tolerant. He doesn't want us to touch him. He just wants us to put his food plate in, clean up his poop, and get out. <laughs> That's literally all he wants. So oh, he's, so his vibe is all. You don't bother me. I won't bother you. Pretty much. If you get too near him, he'll whip you with his tail. <laughs> oh wow. He he's a sassy little boy, and he but... was a pet. <laughs> <laughs> so he yeah, got too big for the people. <laughs> so yeah, the so, yeah. Even though they're even though they're cold blooded, these these are, these are creatures with with emotions and. They do, and they demand, and they demand our care, and they demand our respect, and yeah, don't, and so yeah, the whole gluing, the whole gluing fins, gluing horns on onto them. It wasn't just lizards, also. It was el it was elephant fur on elephants and horns on on hogs to to do that, and and an armadillo. Don't glue stuff on animals. No, don't do it. And even in an That's, attack of the killer shrews, I think they at least had like fur suits on whippet dogs, which you know, okay, if it was just like a fur suit, mm -hmm. I'm okay with that. But which, it, that also counts as slipper swords. Yes, it but, does. But, yeah, there, was a, oh, there was actually a moment where uh, a, the alien from Alien Three was going to be a slurposaur. Really? Yes. Uh, yes, they put a here. Here it is. They attempted to put an alien suit on a small whippet dog. Okay, I get. Guess that's They're a favorite. Guess that's a fate. That's a favorite, and they also look very thin. I guess. Yeah. For a brief scene when the xenomorph is still at small size, but when they looked at the result, it looked exactly like a small dog wearing an alien suit. <laughs> Adorable, but not exactly threatening. So they ended yeah. up using a using a puppet. Oh, I want to see that footage. Where is that footage? <laughs> Okay. All right. I can send you a link. I can send you a link to it. There's one on Imager. An <laughs> is it cute? <laughs> what? Is it cute? It is pretty cute. <laughs> She's a cute little alien monster. <laughs> uh, oh, you're a cute. Yes, you're a cute little parasite. <laughs> I say that to my snakes all the time, even though they're not parasites. <laughs> and one of the alligators, but he's a butthead. Okay. <laughs> but there's, yeah, there's ways to do it. It doesn't always work, a la Alien 3, but. Mm -hmm. But, all right, so if you can avoid gluing, if you can avoid gluing, and, and 
not necessarily you don't have to be confined to dinosaurs you can do whatever you yeah. can do mythical creatures you can just do you know or you could larger do... versions of animals you can or do you... whatever or you could or a lot of these movies they involved t- they involved either time travel or a, or an island that was unt- that's untouched by time and un- you know an undiscovered an undiscovered island and it was like all right think you're thinking backwards how about you how about go how about do the uh planet of the how about go planet of the apes it's far flung into the future there was a bit there was some kind of devastating cataclysm and then when life re- life returned now the now the uh the life forms that were so small that we kept as pe- as pets they now rule the earth as giant monstrosities goddamn geckos <laughs> But yeah, there's. I like that idea. <laughs> post-apocalyptic, mm-hmm. the giant geckos everywhere. It doesn't even have to be post-apocalyptic. It could. Be, it's just like the world's restarting, essentially. Yeah, and you're you know you time travel or whatever. You fling forward. And it's like oh crap. It's looking oh crap. Did we go back? Did we go back into the past? And then you have to, then you find like a modern building. Oh no, this is the future. I like this idea. <laughs> I like yes, it. <laughs> yes, it borrows a lot from Planet of the Apes, but at least that had a better idea. That at least that had a better idea. Yes, and if you do that with, you know, whatever, whatever mm-hmm. reptile or whatever animal, that could be fun. Mhm. It could be comedic. Running away from a gecko sounds <laughs> hilarious, but you know, yeah, and then there could, yeah, there can be some. There could be some comedic parts to it. There's then there's also some scare. There's there can be some beauty parts. Like imagine like gi- like giant like giant canaries or something funny. But oh god, that's beautiful. That's terrifying. Uh, gi- that is terrifying. <laughs> okay, gi- what about cardinals? Eh, that might be good. Yeah, um, it could be that could be beautiful. And then you have the scary parts, like giant crocodiles, giant monitor lizards. We don't have to go that giant. We have Komodo dragons already. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, make them even bigger. Yes, bring back Baranus Prisicus, also commonly known as Megalania. Oh. <laughs> a, a, imagine a Komodo dragon, but about three to four times its size. Wow. And it was fairly recently that that went extinct, like like about ten thousand years ago. Oh, that Australia, <laughs> that recent. That's that's considered to to paleontology. Yes, that's considered recent. Yeah, and it's like bring that back if you <laughs> want to go. You know, for the whole time travel thing, bring back a Megalania, or you know, just you know, have fun. I would definitely. Yeah, we definitely need some uh, Komodo dragon experts and wranglers because though because I'll reach out to my uh yeah my friends. those because because those aren't those ain't your grandpa's iguanas those things <laughs> those things will not only tear you apart but you get but you get one scrape from their teeth they will kill you not to mention the claws yeah and that's just, and that's if you avoid the claws yeah. But I mean, there's so much that you could do that sounds both beautiful and terrifying mm-hmm. and hilarious. And there's just, oh, here's an idea. <laughs> uh, here in Pennsylvania, I have no idea what it's like out in Iowa, but we have an issue with inv- with invasive species called red-eared sliders. Hmm. Very common pet turtles. Oh. Imagine like a yeah, people release them and now they're overpopulating in oh boy my state and, we, and everywhere. We had some we had an invasive species called the zebra mollusk. Oh, those sound what? fun. Yeah, I've uh-huh. heard of those. Oh but god. You imagine know, you... like red eared sliders the size of a truck. Mm. I have no idea how that would work, but uh, you know, physiologically, I don't care. That sounds terrifying. <laughs> see, even the see, even even you, Ian, you're you're a scientist and you love reptiles. But when it comes to movies, you're like Square Cube Law, be damned. Yes. 
<laughs> yes. Bring because, back giant baranids and giant geckos. Simply and and simply because it it's fun. It's something. It's sometimes fun to just go to a movie and and turn, turn your, off your brain. Turn for off a your bit. brain. And that's all. That's and it's only when you do. It's when you do something dumb. It's when the movie does something very very dumb. That like call an iguana that, a T-Rex. <laughs> call it that audience that audiences will just will just suddenly go, oh. Let's see, there was a let's see, there's a there's a quote that this video meant that this video mentioned. Uh the, essentially, essentially saying that when we go to movies, we do we do except we do we know it's a fantasy. But but despite that, we do expect some le- we do s- expect some level of realis- uh, realism, especially when it comes to giant dinosaurs. We expect it to look like a we expect it to look uh, like a, like a dinosaur, or at least when you, uh, when you name something, we expect it to look a different way. Didn't Henry Wu kind of also touch upon that in Jurassic World? Yeah, he, he and in the in Jurassic Park, the novel, actually. Uh, He wants... uh, People don't want to see what's real. They want to see what they expect. Mm -hmm. Granted, they're very different contexts in what both of these conversations were being discussed. Mm -hmm. But it still holds true. People, when you call something a dinosaur, it has to look like what people think a dinosaur is. Mm -hmm. And most of us, the general audience... (laughs) <laughs> expect a dinosaur to be like a giant lizard. However, if you t- call that giant lizard, if you call the giant igua- uh, iguana a T-Rex, that it will immediately that uh, that will immediately turn the audience off because absolutely they, because, because we know what a T-Rex looks like, mm-hmm. and we ex- we didn't even even if we know what the ex- the scientific accurate look of it is. We do something. We all, most of us who grew up with Jurassic Park, we also expect it to to look a certain way. And even if you don't get it, you know, semi correct, it, it you're not gonna win anything there, bud. It's mm-hmm. just <laughs> your audience is gonna check out, and it's just gonna not do well. Doesn't it, matter how good your story is. If your monster isn't what you say it is, th- the threat is gone. Mm-hmm. As, and it is kind of amazing that I have seen I have seen what I I have seen someone actually put in a scientifically accurate T Rex in Jurassic Park. I've seen that video before. He did uh, several other animals, actually. Yeah, several other animals and. Even though it is scientifically accurate, I mean, we still know it's a T-Rex, and we also know that the T-Rex in the Jurassic Park that we got, it's still a T-Rex. It just looks much, much fiercer, much, much more scary, but it's still a T-Rex. Yeah, the only, and, and the Jurassic Park T-Rex is actually still pretty good. Uh, we just now know it probably had it. Uh, a T-Rex is actually probably a bit bulkier. It more than likely had lips, but it overall still not bad. Yeah, it's just a, again a product of its time. Uh-huh. But no, but no one is going to believe an iguana is a Tyrannosaurus Rex. No, even if they've been living under a rock for the past fifty years, it's not going to work. Mm-hmm. And so that and. So that is also if for filmmakers who do want to use like actual like actual uh, lizards or animals in in like their movies to kind of pass them off as prehistoric creatures. Lesson lesson uh, number I don't know twelve. We pre- whatever. <laughs> whatever. We're not keeping track. <laughs> not keeping track. We didn't even number them. But definitely another lesson: do not do not call them by by an actual dinosaur name. Especially in this day and age, because mm-hmm. we've got Google. Mm-hmm. Unless, unless you can get, unless you can get very close, I think in, I think in one of the, uh, 
TV Tropes page I found, the Spinosaurus can act. You can actually pass off a crocodile with a with a sail on its back as a Spinosaurus. Eh, not really. Not really. Not really, because Spinosaurus, except for that brief slip in like 20, 20, what was it, 2014, when it was quadrupedal for like a year, uh, it's always been an animal on two legs. So oh. you couldn't get away with that. A Dimetrodon, you might be able to, if people don't really know what we now know about Dimetrodon. <laughs> but... Um, you might be able to get away with it depending on the style that you're going for. Mm. But I think that using animals, modern day animals to look like prehistoric animals, especially in this day and age where we have the internet and we can easily fact check you. Mm -hmm. Rather than, you know, the 50s where, you know, you actually have to be in that field to know what the hell you're doing or go what to you're talking about. Or go to a library. What are those? <laughs> <laughs> no shade to libraries they're still very important mm -hmm. but yeah it the information was not as accessible back then as to what these animals that they're attempting to portray actually are mm -hmm. that's why they could get away with it you can't get away with it anymore so that's why you have to do like a very close match or, you know, a giant version of a modern animal in the future. Mm -hmm. That it, and I guess that would be that's sort of like the that's sort of like a a later uh, reason for why the tr the slurpasaur trend kind of died off. Yeah, people got sick of it and as the information became more available, especially with the mass communication of science and paleontology to the masses. It just, people got sick of it, and A, ratings went down, B, mm -hmm. animal cruelty laws went into effect, and for the past. And C, and C, it was common, it was commonly associated with, with low quality, low budget movies. And the final nail in the coffin to the entire thing was Jurassic Park. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It would it would be the only closest thing we get to get to Slurpasaur in Jurassic Park is the is the animatics that uh, uh, that are that came that came on the DV that came on the first DVD like the raptors in the kitchen where they act yeah with the uh, go motion test yeah, shots the go, the go motion test shots where the t where the Velociraptors are actually flicking their tongues like lizards. Mm-hmm. And, uh... That got shot down pretty quick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that... That might be the last semi-serious take of a Slurpasaur in modern times. Now, obviously, we have used animals and reptiles in film and television mm -hmm. ever since forever i mean one of the biggest ones that i recall is actually from the disney channel they had a pretty decent run of a show called jesse and in that is a large monitor lizard named mr kipling hmm. and it was just a pet of one of the kids that their main character jesse would be a nanny to and it just roamed around. It was not always in scene with the kids because I believe, if I recall correctly, that was an Asian water monitor. Okay, so I'm. I don't not know what that safe. is, but I'm guessing. I was gonna say, judging by your reaction, it's not not exactly pet friendly. Not normally, and whenever the lizard had to be in the same scene with the kids for a certain shot or whatever, it was a puppet. Okay. <laughs> it was hardly ever the actual animal and that's the only way you could do it a with animal with animal laws and b child laws and mm. child safety laws mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's that's like the last time that I recall animals being used 
in a major production like that. Mm. I, I there very well may be others, but I but doing that is honestly probably the best way to do it. If you're not doing the whole slurpasaur thing, just treating the animal responsibly. That's mm -hmm. absolutely. There was not what they did in Friday the Thirteenth. Oh God, yes, I just. Yeah. Don't animal do that. Cruel, animal cruelty, right there as well. Yeah, I don't care if it was a harm. Actually, it was a harmless native species. In fact, one I just found yesterday. Really? Yeah. Everyone's out and about, and it was a beautiful day, and I found two snakes. Oh, huh. okay. <sighs> but, but you really... It's, it's all about being, it's treating it's treating animals, even ones that you're afraid of, with, with respect. Mm-hmm. And, and, and yes, even though the, t even, even though I would like to do, even though I and kind of curious to use this technique there are some lines i wouldn't that i won't that i won't cross because... absolutely we're not gonna have live fights no absolutely absolutely not if 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 i did do a project like what am i talking about like i'm actually gonna go to hollywood i'm not going to hollywood but if 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 in another universe, the, the me that is in Hollywood that is still interested in doing this, would probably would probably not you would not film a live a live fight in which in which one of the one or both the animals are are killed, would definitely I would he would let's see the other me would probably uh, use th uh, computer generated models. At least for one of the animals. You might go to get away with, you know, like I said before, having one of the animals roll. Mm hmm Actually, that's something you could do. You could get a puppet, have it grab onto somebody's leg, and then have that person get dragged into the water, <laughs> and then have the animal roll. And it's like, oh no, our main character is being death rolled. Oh yeah. Or like even do a even like a puppet lizard that's that's just filled with that's just filled with meat. Yeah, you'd have to get like a an outer casing. Yeah, you essentially have to do it like a sausage. Yes, and have an outer casing that is safe for the animal to consume. Mm -hmm. You Cause... might be able to get away with that with like certain reptile safe frosting. <laughs> See even. See, even even this, we're still coming up with ideas on how to on how to do it safely and creatively, and ethically. Mm -hmm. And yes, I mean, there's so, ways to do it. <laughs> so I'm so I'm sitting. I'm sad that uh, this sort of technique has kind of died out, but I'm not sad. I'm not sad of. The, I'm not sad that the i'm not sad that the cruel i'm not sad that the cruelty is gone or oh, i'm not sad yeah. oh, wait i'm sad i am happy the cruelty is gone i'm not sad that the yeah, cru yeah i'm i'm not sad that the i'm not sad that, that animals aren't being hurt anymore. yes that animals <laughs> aren't being hurt yes thank you thank you my my brain and mouth don't connect right English be hard. Mm-hmm. But... But, yeah, this is... But, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I think we've probably said all that we can. This is a... It's a technique that definitely rough... Is definitely rough around the... Okay, it was... It's definitely harsh. It's a harsh... It's a harsh film technique, but still has some... That can still have some merit for for uh for some low budget film low budget filmmakers. We or just, just you no know, comedy. Or just or just even yeah, you can use it as you can use it as serious sci-fi, or, or you can just use it for use it for comedy. We've some of the you the YouTuber that we mentioned definitely use uses this technique for comedy, and it works. Yes. 
and it and it works we just we just it's just that we draw the line at animal cruelty absolutely but i don't have anything else to add dude i think we said our piece yeah i think from both think, perspectives yeah and like i like i said the video that that inspired that inspired this discussion is linked right in the description uh do some, do give him do give him a thumbs up for this give leave a com leave a comment and uh, and honestly uh, hope, hopefully maybe in the future we can do something we can do a little project like this a, ve a very ethical slurposaur project yeah i can get a build i can probably get a building off amazon and yeah crested gecko should be here by sometime in august <laughs> So maybe by next year, you'll probably see something along this line. Maybe, yeah. Just a, just a little clip, you know. Mm -hmm. Maybe a shot of, of people running through a city and the <laughs> camera pans up and it's just you know, a wide shot of, you know, a gecko on a building. Mm, not... Like a 20 second thing, maybe not 30 seconds. Not impossible. Not impossible. I could find some. I could find some stock footage. What you don't have friends that would run away for a shot? I don't have many friends. <laughs> Maybe Tyler could be our guy that looks up and takes his glasses off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could probably. And then he could say, "Not damn it, Ian!" <laughs> I was like. It's oh the fortune cookie was right. <laughs> I want to do this now. <laughs> yeah. It, oh yeah, it sounds like it would be it's it'd be very fun as long as as long as you have a conscience. Yeah, absolutely. It, I mean, the, filmmaking itself it's filmmaking in entire its entirety it's kind it can be stressful but it can be it can be fun just as long as you're not willing to cut corners or kill some animals yeah but yeah then we're just going on to i'm just repeating myself now absolutely yeah this i think we're done dude yeah but, we uh, are we are so <laughs> done uh, uh once again congratulations to jurassic park 30 year anniversary of the first film mm-hmm let's uh let's hope and here's to 30 more of of inspiration i was just gonna go to like 50 because that's the next big stop dude well yeah it, it, well true i mean but it would, it'd be kind of it'd be kind of weird you go happy 30th anniversary and then here's to 20 more fair enough <laughs> but it yeah jurassic park killed it's pretty much killed this as a franchise or a, as a technique <laughs> as uh -huh. And now we're congratulating it because it deserves it. <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, so, and yes, and so yes, thank so thank you, yes, thank you, Jura Jurassic Park for bringing the ethics back to bringing some ethics back to our to our lizard friends, as well as also as well as also as well as also making dinosaurs scary again, and. Uh, and also, yes, making sure that no animals were harmed during the making of this picture. A lot of people were, though. What about the goat? I don't know about the goat. No. Did the T-Rex... It was a necessary casualty. <laughs> <laughs> okay, some animals were harmed. And the cow. <laughs> Some animals were harmed. The goat, the cow, Nedry, but he had it coming. Gennaro also had it coming. Yeah. He abandoned the kids. Mm-hmm. He abandoned the kids. Uh-huh. Uh, but, but anyway, yes. Happy 30th anniversary to Jurassic Park. Thank you. Thank you for bringing this morally reprehensible trend to to an end. As well as, well as, as well as, well, just, just lots of inspiration for, for filmmakers. Mm -hmm. And and not just filmmakers, just inspiration to up um, to even paleontol young paleontologists like Ian here. A anybody, inspiration to anybody. It's a wonderful movie that deserves its place in 
just well above actually Slurposaurs <laughs> in terms of its um, cultural importance. Uh huh. <laughs> but yeah, congrats to the entire cast and crew of Jurassic Park for thirty years. Mm hmm. And sooner or later, we will do our own dinosaur thing once yeah. I get a gecko. <laughs> <laughs> But until until that time yet, be sure to join us next next month uh, from here on the Nerdvana podcast. This is John Murphy and Ian Benoit signing off. <laughs>